Good afternoon, my Cracker Tugas and Greater Illustriad Faithful. It's your boy, MBT, back on the commentary desk for another sweaty slobber knocker. But before you knock too many of your slobs, let's talk about today's casters. In one corner, we have Mario's Gaming World. Mario's well acquainted with the evils of the Illustriad and is back for revenge. He's representing the solar element and don't get tricked by Trish. This puts him at a disadvantage versus nearly any other caster. Let's see what he's playing. What's up, duelists? This is Mario from Mario's World of Gaming here, and we are playing solar in this season of the Illustriad. I like combos. I know that solar has some combos, so I picked solar so I could do some combos. The goal here of the deck is pretty straightforward, I'd say. Use Less Dragon to blow things up, and, you know, use Exaltus and Rabbit to get us for pieces. And we have other cool Nexus targets here as well. But yeah, definitely the main the main boss monster that we're going to try to do some really cool things with. My first round opponent is playing Frost. Uh, things in Frost that scare me are exactly Rhinosect. Um, Rhinosect gives me a little bit of problems. So, uh, hopefully we can blow it up with an Alter Lust Dragon combo before it becomes a problem. Or Gaze the Little Dude before it becomes a problem. Or something. Or worst case, PTA the Big Dude, I guess. And uh, hopefully we can make it past round one. So let's see what happens here. Let's hope this list won't result in Mario becoming Lustra... Gone. <laughs> Next up is Nova, who's 1D short of the rest of our competitors. Hello, everyone. I'm Nova Akami, and I'm here to show you my deck list for Illustriad Season 3. My main strategy when deck building was to be able to have lots of room for early game, because if my opponent gets into Celeste Leo, it could be pretty bad for me. So through my deck list, you'll see lots of removal. All right, so let's start. First, we have one copy of Resting Your Laurels. Then we have three copies of Gorgon's Gaze. Three copies of Poison Tip Arrow. Two copies of Cryoblast. Two copies of Keon. Two copies of Frigicum. Then we have Narpoon here, be able to search out more frost. Then we have three copies of Tsunami. So that's some more removal. Then we have our little guy here, Cryoling, with three copies. And then his big brother, three copies of Cryovern. And of course, the biggest one, one copy of Cryoscorch. Then we have a copy of Lavalith. Two copies of Catarant. Three copies of Astrabbit. Three copies of Ambrosia, two copies of Nectar of the Gods, one Earthquake, and two Shield of Achilles. Next, let's go on to the Spirit deck. So let's start, we have two copies of a Fire Spirit, two copies of an Earth Spirit, three copies of a Water Spirit, two Thunder, and a whole lot of Frost, baby! A whole lot of Frost. God, they're so cute. <laughs> I'm sorry if you heard my cat. <laughs> <laughs> Lastly, let's move on to the sideboard. We actually have some, some new cards from Daybreak in here as well. So we have three copies of Rhino Nymph, three copies of Rhino Sect, one Catarant, one Cryoblast, three copies of Boom Bat, and three copies of Chains of Prometheus. All right, and that's my deck list. Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. <laughs> Seems like a pretty standard Frost list. Perhaps playing one more Cryo than I feel comfortable with, but in the immortal words of my former teammate, PK Sparks, go Cryo Scorch. Mario's Gaming World is going to begin the game with a little bit of PNG tubery of his own. He forgot to turn the camera on for the first turn. Corvashine is a fine first turn Elestral. This is a really interesting card. It's like if Astrabbit was terrible. In this scenario, he'll of course be able to see an additional card in his deck. Don't worry, once we get a fetch land, that Corvashine is going to be a $50 common. Nova's going to draw off the top of her deck, and we'll see what she can accomplish. You can see she's already down two Spirit, which shows us that off-camera she's taken a mulligan. Earthquake deals very effectively with Rabbit, which means it's a perfect tool for the Corvashine as well. Speaking of Rabbit, down comes the boy Astrabbit in that beautiful tournament pack, Rarity. If you haven't gotten an opportunity to play in any OTS events, I really have to recommend you sniff one out. These 
unbelievable entry packs have some really fantastic art in them. I'm really partial to the Rise, actually. Back to Mario with just a naked aggro rabbit. And down comes Gleam. You would think that he would have a three attack Elestral, but not so. Instead, we're gonna peam that Astrabbit down to zero on receive. And then of course we can walk over it very effectively. Down for Nova, and you have to imagine that her hand is chock full of powerful Elestrals. The problem with this Frost strategy is that you can very easily get caught on big men. And while usually that's something I enjoy, in scenarios like this, it's very frustrating. You can see a little bit of math being done here. That was a send of a Flurmine to the graveyard off the Ambro to return the requisite amount of spirits to cast an Earthquake again. Of course, with Earthquake at one, that won't happen, but putting an additional Flurmine in the graveyard makes this Cryoling a little more powerful. It's going to resist almost everything, and this Corvishine is going to resolve here, uh, revealing both a Lumaru and a Gorgon's Gaze. We're going to put a card back as well. Again, just one fetch land, and my life is yours, Mr. Corvishine. Actually, really frustrating to see that Mario isn't using Bleed Corvishine. Up, up, uh. Nova's turn now for an Aggro Rabbit again. Three off the top, and she is swimming in card advantage. I really like deploying Astrabbit this way. It's become a lot less effective in a world that includes Arcolith, but I am one of the biggest proponents of attack position Rabbit in the game. Why even play the card if he's not going to occasionally get in? Unfortunately, still no back row for Nova. Just a singular card you'd expect after a couple of Rabbit activations, she would have them in spades. Instead, Mario's Gaming World is going to be able to cast a Lustragon and immediately equip it with a Golden Fleece. This is a nightmare scenario for Nova. It means that we're going to have to find at least one removal spell, but likely two. Here, the Lustragon is going to be able to theoretically Nexus to itself if we want to lose the Golden Fleece. We'll see if he decides to do it, and we've made it! Back to the future. Mario's going to go ahead and attack here over this copy of Cryoling, seven beating the five, and then of course, Nova will have to expend an additional spirit as a result. Now you imagine the Cryoling has been cast because we have an additional one in the hand, but it's not hard to imagine this hand from Nova is probably lacking in many respects. There's probably a Cryo Scorch, maybe a Cryo Vern in the hand, and as expected, a follow-up Cryoling. From this position, I can't really tell, but I believe she does have an additional Flurmine, uh, both to cast and then to Special Ascend. Remember, that Cryoling effect is mandatory, uh, so if you can, you have to fire it. We're going to summon the Cryovern, and it does theoretically crash with the Lustragon, but that Golden Fleece means that it's going to survive, and we'll have to find something else to do with it. I like personally casting Cryovern with uh, a a uh, Leviathan, uh, mostly because it enables you to play around Tsunami a little more effectively. Uh, here, I think understanding that we're just going to have to maintain a pretty significant ratio of Flurmine in the graveyard, and Nova's just uh, checking out the uh, hand real quick before switching that Astrabbit back to defense, and uh, I, 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 I don't know, maybe going to combat, uh, maybe not. Yeah, just elects to pass here. It's hard to pass up the opportunity to keep a Cryovern on field, but it's just kind of a sitting duck, not only to the Earthquake that's coming down, but also just a Lustragon Nexus off of a one drop would have made quick work of this card. So, so frustrating that this card, when it gets off to the races, is so impressively powerful. Down comes Lumaru, and Nova's going to PTA it. That PTA set from the turn the Lustragon came out. You imagine that she was probably expecting to not have to utilize the PTA against the Lustragon and thereby take three, uh, instead doing something like crashing into it with the Cryovern, uh, but the Golden Fleece has complicated the entirety of this game. Now the Lustragon is at three uh, after a Nexus ability and will hit for three as well. Nova slowly running out of spirits down to 10, tied with Mario's 10, though to be fair, five of those are currently represented on the field. Post-Earthquake, it's really hard to think what can actually take down a Fleeced Lustragon. A critter that walks over it, attacking twice into known back row, seems like a bit of a pipe dream. Nova going for a Frigicub in defense, just walling up as best as she can. That won't provide an effective wall because of the Lustragon's ability, but potentially it will force Mario to put all of his eggs in one basket, which maybe helps. I can imagine like maybe a Lavalith plus a Laurels from a four enchanted a Lustragon would be able to contest the existing board. But again, that presumes the set card isn't something like a Gorgon's Gaze. It's just such a tough position in a world 
post ban list to contest cards like this that love these removal spells, and this is as bad as it gets. Now the Exaltus can Nexus from the Lustragon onto itself to provide Mario with an infinite amount of guys in hand, one right after the other. Reminder that Exaltus does not search a uh, solar Elestral, it searches an ethereal Elestral, including Astrabbit. And now the Lustragon will Nexus back onto itself, pop the Frigid Cub, and Nova is about to take four damage going down to five. This looks like the end of the game. Nothing short of a miracle would work now. And we know that Mario not only has a back row, but the Astrabbit is follow up as well. Nova counting here down to what I believe is six spirits total. Things aren't looking fantastic. What could be her final draw? Oh, and she doesn't look happy with it. A Cataran does stem the bleeding slightly, but a reminder that it's really only a net gain of a single spirit, costing one to cast and then returning two Flurmine from the Underworld back into the spirit deck. And Mario is more than happy to Nexus to Exaltus, Nexus to Lustragon, eat it once again. And since Nova is at five, all it would require is a re-enchant of the Lustragon in order to get in for lethal. This is all she wrote. A second Lustragon, completely unnecessary. Absolutely not necessary, Mario. Oh my goodness. Uh, theoretically, you could get two pops here, but there's no back row to contest it. And just a PTA over the entire game. That's nowhere near enough. Nova's gonna take five directly to the face and we will head to the next game. Don't foretell. Don't look at the top three. Surely you can just put her out of her misery, Mario. Oh no. And there it is. Someone call Bowser. Mario is taking over. Nova heads to game two, I believe, uh, a little afraid of that Lustragon and a little more willing to hold an Earthquake. But that's the problem with this solar deck. A significant amount of the cards, the Lumaru, the Corvishine, all of them have these really, really high either attack or defense stats. And all it takes is one turn to get that... Uh, that unbelievable uh critter onto the field revealing a hand of tsunami tsunami cryovern the tsunamis could have come in handy but uh the lustragon um as a relative of Lodagon, has this incredible stat line i mean seven attack is of course nothing to uh shake a stick at but shockingly this card also has six defense which means that you'll have to do better than a lava lith in order to get over it Shuffling back up here, we'll just try and find our way into game two. If I'm Nova, I know I'm putting in those resting on your laurels. I'm considering cards like Blizzard that could theoretically pop runes. I mean, something's got to give against this extremely powerful deck, extremely powerful ethereal Elestral, and the Nexus Bank that makes it all possible. For game two, unsurprisingly, it looks like Nova Aokami is going to be going first. And we'll kick things off with a defense position Cryoling. Gosh. Oh, this Frost deck does not draw particularly well. And after that first game, I'd imagine she's very hesitant to ship back a hand knowing the uh, swings that she can theoretically take. You'd imagine that set card is some sort of defensive rune, a tsunami, a PTA. A PTA would be really fantastic because it's very unlikely the critter that Mario slams down will contest the cryoling. Astrabbit is about as good as it gets and we'll see if Nova wants to fire off a PTA. Looks like no. Mario quickly adding a card to his hand, I think really excited about it. Then setting one, two, and passing the rabbit special. What can Nova get up to? Well, the Cryoling is currently a 1-3, so not much. Oh, but we will expend one right here. Are we drawing? We are trying to fix up this hand, but also increasing the attack on the Cryoling. Things could theoretically turn in her favor over the course of the next couple of turns, but for now, we're going to be setting down that Peem once again. Cryoling going to zero, but of course doesn't matter because it's in defense position. All you have to do with cards like Peem is threaten, threaten, threaten. Their existence on the board means the Lustragon could come down at any time and turn this game on its head. Nova taking a quick look at what she's got, and it looks like, are we going to expend to draw again? Oh no, it looks like we might be. No, what's in the hand? Oh, perhaps a grip that should have been shipped back. We are going to switch the Cryoling to attack now that it has three and threaten that Peem. That is going to be met with nothing. Thank goodness. Lustragon evaded for one additional turn. And look how excited Nova is about it. She's like, oh, thank God. All right, Mario draws for turn. Let's see what we've got. 
A lot of really good Elestrals could come down here. Corvishine is one of them. Uh, we're going to go Corvishine in order to go ahead and look at the top two. Uh, and then put one into the hand and one on top of the deck. Uh, Nova says no. I'm going to Gorgon's Gaze it. Very interesting uh, application of this card here. Um, but also is going to boost that Cryoling even more. Potentially a second one coming down here. I believe we are currently at four on the Cryoling. We're so close. Oh, we're so close. Are we expending to draw again? Nova! <laughs> no, it looks like... Uh, I may have miscounted, and we're at six. Cryovern coming in hot. Expending to draw on the main phase off the Cryoling. We're going to special send to the Cryovern. Remember, we have not used our normal uh, cast, which means that we can still potentially cast something afterwards, or expend to draw, or, you know, uh, ascend over the Cryoling, or the Cryovern into something like a Cryo Scorch. That would be funny. I don't know if it would be good. Nova thinking about her options here, of course. It's hard to make a uh, decision about which of these two you're supposed to deal with, the Astrabbit or the Corvishine, despite the fact that the Corvishine seems like it would perform better specifically in uh, this uh, solar list. I think the answer is still probably the Rabbit. Uh, Nova's going for the attack here, just setting a single card, and the Rabbit does go down. Mario looking at his grip, and this is a time you could deploy the Lustragon, though notably, 7 into 7 isn't exactly where you want to be. All right, a one of Earthquake would work wonders now. Oh my gosh, and I speak it into existence. Oh no, down goes the Cryovern once again. The thing about the one of is that sometimes you'll draw it. And Nova very upset that her incredible monster has been taken care of, and this is really bad news. Exaltus here can theoretically uh, Nexus from the Corvishine and then get a Lustragon threatening it immediately. Let's see what Nova wants to do. Yeah, Alex to PTA. This is a hard PTA to call. You kind of want to save the PTA for the Lustragon, but you also don't want to take five. So instead, she's going to PTA the Exaltus, which disincentivizes Mario from Nexusing to it and means that he gets to probably continue to pay off the Corvishine. You know, there's a scenario where you Exaltus onto the Corvishine and then uh, you use the Corvishine again. But I think instead, he's just going to go combat, get in for a couple way ahead in Spirit Count at this point. And then the payout means that the Exaltus will go to the graveyard, or Underworld, rather, at the end of the turn. But at the cost of another spirit from Nova Aokami's spirit deck, putting her down to a healthy but survivable nine. All right, we'll take the Corvishine, and we will take one more at end step. Let's see. Yes. She's thinking. Yeah, I think there maybe is a world where you, uh, where you don't pay out just because it's only got three attack, but of course depends on the contents of her hand. Cryoling once again, follow up Cryoling really good. This threatens the Corvishine in such a way that there is a world in which uh, Mario is never able to get to the Lustragon and you are able to walk away with it um, using these Cryoverns. Kind of the thesis behind the Snowman deck that I love so much, despite the fact that it's PP bad, is that uh, Frost uniquely has this ability. Every single turn, it can just slap down a big guy. Cryoling into Cryovern, uh, Morolith, um, Rhinosect. There's just so many large men in this strategy. It's staggering. Reminds me so much of uh, my other intellectual pursuits. Ambrosia coming down, and we'll just throw a couple of spirits back into the spirit deck here. Uh, a Triumvirate for 11, and the Cryovern in over the Corvishine. Mario thinking here, uh, looks like we'll take it with one additional spirit. And suddenly Mario's on the back foot, uh, resting on your laurels, I guess would be devastating here. But other than that, he's got a lot of ground to cover. All right, well, you know, I guess I'll just keep my mouth shut in the future. Resting on your laurels comes down a one of and a one of into the Cryovern. You can see Nova's like, no, not another piece of removal. Now, this is terrible because she's invested so much into this Cryovern that she's now at eight spirits to Mario's 11. He can safely expend a draw with the knowledge that Nova probably doesn't have the capacity to push him further, even going so far as to pay out for a Nectar of the Gods to grab a couple more cards, give himself some more options. Haven't seen an Apollo yet. Is now the time? Looks like not. Nova's going to draw. Is it anything? I mean, pus pushing the advantage is definitely where we want to be. And Kione is a great way to do it. Now, Kione is strong for sure, uh, but it's also expensive. Here, uh, I think correctly just enchanting for one. 
using it, I'd imagine, to get back the Cryoling, casting the Cryoling and going once more into the Cryovern. I believe she said she's on three, and for that reason, we still have one available. But doing this line will take her down to, I believe, four spirits in her spirit deck, which is uh, very few. Um, a uh, five, rather, and um, Mario to seven if he takes this. There's also a scenario where Mario hits this with a tsunami and then is able to, oh no, PTA. Uh, being so ahead in the spirit deck means that here he can PTA, take an additional two, go down to six, then take an additional two to pay out at the end of the turn, go down to four, but have so much in terms of tempo that it's not going to matter. And Nova's already found two copies of Ambrosia. It's unlikely she's going to be able to heal past this position absent a Catarant. Oh, down goes the Cryovern, and the ball is in Mario's corner. Five spirits remain. There's so much you can accomplish with Solar from this position. Apollo into Exaltus, into Nexus, into take three. Ambro, to start it off, puts him at a comfortable nine, I believe. Oh, this is devastating for Nova. You can see her mouth hanging open there. Maybe there's something we can do. As just as planned, down comes Apollo. Let's see how many we're going to do it for. Three is the magic number. It means we can theoretically exalt us for two after foretelling. We'll foretell first. It's Lavalith. It's Peem. And it is Ambrosia. Peem, the only card we can get there. Though we can keep the Lavalith on top for any scenario in which Nova Aokami would be able to mount a defense. Mario down to three here. But again, would be able to instantly even it up with any Nexuser of which this deck plays a great deal. Instead, electing to Peem in defense position and pass turn nova only two spirits left an eruption now please oh it looks like mario's not done the second ambro coming down says i'm not taking any chances not even casting it off the apollo i think afraid of exactly eruption and nothing else we'll set one additional card and pass here uh nova will draw now if one of those set cards is an altar of stars we have a sick altar here narpoon coming down is really good for nova holy and i don't think she's dipped into those leviathan yet there it comes will it be met with a response at gorgons here would be good but expensive he is gonna go for it it will protect the peam and that to me can only mean one thing one of those two cards is luster gone and he knows that he'll be able to hit for a fantastic four next turn Nova's going to set one card. Here we go. Draw four turn. And as expected, the Ascension into Lustragon. That's going to put Nova in a really tough spot. Going to go for the Lustragon Nexus here. Are we going to move them all? We're going to be met with a Gorgon's Gaze out of Nova. She's got to find something. One spirit on Mario's side of the field. Is it enough, Nova? All you gotta do is beat Lustragon, Nova. Oh no, and it looks like she doesn't have it with only two in her spirit deck. One hit from the Lustragon will do it. Oh no, eyes completely closed. Please don't be over. Mario draws, thinking about it for a second. The only thing he has to fear is that set back row. Go for the Nexus ability of the Lustragon, wasting no time, and then activating the effect. I imagine we're going for the Narpoon, but we could also go for the back row. Uh, with only two spirits, though, the back row is nearly inconsequential. Oh my goodness, there's no way we're casting another card. Oh, it's Ambro. Ambro off the Lustragon because, of course, she's already at two, and that will seal the deal, ensuring that we don't get got by something silly. A tsunami, maybe, from Nova, followed up with like a, an Ambrosia plus a couple of cards. Here, getting in for two off the Lustragon will uh, mean it's lights out for Nova Aokami. The last two, the shield coming down, trying to pay out and realizing she can't. No, no, not like this. Ah, well, Lustragon claims another victim. Uh, a deck much maligned by the Elestrals community, uh, with the possible exception of Trishula, takes a victory, but will it continue? And there you have it. Mario advances in a spectacularly shiny fashion. Will the sun set on his win streak? You'll have to keep watching to find out.